What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Julie Mitchell and Leah Matthews. I said it backwards this time. I normally say Leah Matthews, Julie I Mitchell. know, you Man. did. I still love, Change. I love both of you the same. <laughs> oh, thanks. We Aww. love you too. Good to yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah. How y'all feeling today? Feeling good. Feeling really excited. Yep. Man. So I'm cold, super, but good. <laughs> yeah, definitely cold. So I'm super excited about today's guest. We get a chance to, to get to know a host and a contestant of an awesome show that literally makes me feel like I'm the laziest person in the world for just sitting there watching <laughs> while these folks are out there getting, doing all kind of, you know, tough. We'll say tough because that's what that's in the name. So tough <laughs> men and women that are doing on the show and in their personal lives. So uh, without pr further ado, please introduce today's guest. So CBS has a fantastic show returning for its second season tonight at eight o'clock, seven o'clock central. Tough as Nails is back with host Phil Kogan to showcase the grit, determination, and mental toughness of hardworking Americans with challenges that take place at real world job sites. Season two features 12 contestants competing for the grand prize, including an amazing national hero. We have Air Force Colonel Meryl Tengesdal with us today. She is an Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom veteran. She's part of our nation's military history. She's the first and only Black woman to fly the U-2 aircraft. Please help us give a warm welcome to Phil and Meryl. Hey. Yay. Tough as nails. Yeah. <laughs> Bill and Meryl, thanks so much for taking time out to join us in just our real quick housekeeping for everybody watching. Drop a note in the comments and let us know where you'll be watching Tough as Nails from tonight. Um, share your questions and comments with Phil and Meryl in the comment section. We'll read those live. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, well, you should because Chief Chats are every week and then you'll know who's coming up next. Well awesome. So. So Phil and Meryl, welcome to Chief Chat. And it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Can you, can you let our viewers know where you're calling in from? Where are you, Meryl? I'm here in the Sacramento area um, in my little office, just uh, having a good time with some phenomenal people right now. <laughs> I'm, in, uh, I'm in Los Angeles, California. I uh, just got back from New Zealand a week ago. I was there for a couple of months after we finished shooting. Uh, but then had to come back because we, uh, when we do the color on the show, you have to really see the same monitor that the person who's, you know, dialing in all the colors is looking at. So had to come back. But um, yeah, in, in LA, in one of my favorite rooms, which is uh, the library where I have all my favorite books. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm so uh, pleased to be, I was just saying before, I've never talked to a chief before. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm so honored to be uh, chatting, chatting with you about Meryl, who is, uh, I mean, as the chief's introduction, um, or as your introduction said, I mean, Meryl is like a, she's like a, a living legend. And uh, one of my favorite moments in the beginning of the show was when everybody was talking about what they do and everybody does really worthy things. That's one of the great things about the show is we're honoring men and women who do all come from all different walks of life. But when Meryl introduced herself and nobody knew what anybody did, everybody kind of went, what? Did you just say, what? <laughs> it was it was a great moment and uh you'll see it on the on the show tonight that everybody was really quite in awe of of, of meryl's uh achievements and it was it's it's been great having her on the show and you yeah and you do you do have a a pretty pretty sick uh book collection back there man i i'm i'm, I'm trying to figure out what <laughs> <laughs> i was like man, okay i gotta i gotta get caught up I think I got like four or five books going on over here, but. <laughs> so congratulations on Tough as Nails. And for years, Americans have loved you as the host of the Emmy winning, uh, the Emmy winning Amazing Race. So can you tell us what makes Tough as Nails so special? And can you share your thoughts on its success? Um, well, you know, when you make a television show, you really don't know if you're ever gonna, you don't know what the ingredients are to make a successful show. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but if it was easy, I, you know, every show that gets launched would um, would work. Uh, and if you kind of 
you, you want to bottle up. Sometimes you you work on something that's successful and you want to bottle that up and take it to another show, but it doesn't always work. I mean, uh, I think something at CBS, something like 30, almost 40 shows have been launched in the last 20 years, uh, wow. gone into a season one. Mm -hmm. And about seven have gone to a season two. It's very rare to go from one to two. You've got so much to get right in season one. And you're really taking a stab in the dark. You don't know like what what you have to do to make something work. And then when it does work, you're like, oh my goodness, we get to do this a second time. We can make it better. <laughs> and um, and having done the second one, I'm already thinking about how I can make the third one better. So, you know, uh, I, I just love that we're able to profile somebody like Meryl. Um, there's a lot of, there, there are a lot of everyday heroes that, that don't get put in the spotlight. And, um, you know, last season with Murph, who's in the military, we were able to shine a light on him and his achievements. And, and, and we have military representation again with Marilyn. And, and I think people are going to fall in love with all our characters. But, uh, you know, the idea that we have so many people serving, um, there's so many families in America that are connected to our military. So I think it's nice to try to shine a light on different aspects of Americans rather than just people that are good at singing or good at dancing or people that are looking to fall in love or they're good at designing or you know, <laughs> it's, it's about like everyday heroes. That's fantastic. Can't wait to watch tonight. I, I got a new show though for you. So Lazy is oh. Chief. Lazy is Chief, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can, I can, I can, we'll pitch it after the show. Don't, don't worry about it. Meryl, it is an honor to have you with us. So Thank all you. of us at the exchange deeply appreciate your service and sacrifice. What led you to compete on Tough as Nails? Um, number one, thanks for the support. Love the exchange. Um, what made me compete, I, I, the appeal to me was that it was just everyday people, as Phil said, and highlighting their accomplishments. And it's through these tough challenges, both physical, mental, on all levels. So it's not just um, like going to a target or swinging across and just showing this, being able to do pull-ups. I mean, it's all about how long can you endure this pain? And I'll tell you, it's, uh, um, it's something that just resonated with me because it reminded me of my whole military career. There's just things that you put your body under both mentally and physically, and you have to endure those things. Um, and I, I just, I fell in love with it when I saw it, when I found out about it. So I was like, I could do this. I could get in there mm -hmm. and, and mix it up. And I got to learn 11 other great people that I got to compete with and against. Um, it's just all around. We built some tight bonds, like in the military. So all of it just resonated with me, just made me think about my military career. And it was, it was a great experience. Awesome. And so you, you mentioned your military career and of course, you know, I, our motto is to fly, fight, and win. So, so we we are already forecasting that to the end of the show because <laughs> that that's what we do in the Air Force. But can you uh? And, but every airman has a story. So, can you tell us about your story? What what uh what what made you join the the Air Force? And also, can you talk about you making history flying the U two? So, Chief, uh, what made me join the military in general was I I wanted to be an astronaut when I was uh, seven or eight, and I started this journey. Um, I had this framework in my head, what I wanted to do at a young age. And uh, I went to college. I knew I needed to be a pilot. Um, I knew I needed to fly. I started out in the Navy uh, flying helicopters. And then I went over to be a T6 instructor for the Navy, for the Navy, but flying in an Air Force base, Moody Air Force base. And I was actually going to resign my commission and get out and go back to school to still pursue being an astronaut as a mission specialist and get a degree. And uh, my boss at the time said, hey, you need to try, hey, come fly with the Air Force and check out some of the program. So um, that's what I did. And I saw the U2 and I saw what they did, saw the mission. It was similar to a lot of things I did in the Navy. I saw the group, the caliber of uh, men and women that were there. And I said, this is the place I need to go. So I applied, I applied for the Air Force. Uh, inter-service transfer request. And then from there, I got picked up in an interview and, and got hired on. And the rest, uh, the rest is history, no mm -hmm. pun intended. 
But um, <laughs> flying the U2, uh, it's incredible. I mean, it's a pressure suit. Uh, you put your body under some unusual situations as, as divers would going pretty deep. So decompression sickness is a, is a factor. Um, it's not for everyone. I've seen this aircraft make people with thousands of hours look like they've stepped the first day into an aircraft if you don't respect it. Um, and it's, it's um, you know, part of the interview process is a claustrophobic check and some people just tap out because they don't want to be in this small suit for right. hours on end. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I just love that. I love that challenge. I, I like being uncomfortable and persevering through that. So that sounds like me getting an MRI, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, what, what's going on? Like this thing is crazy. Yes, yeah. it, it's about that big. <laughs> <laughs> and then the U-2, it, it flies like tw what, twice as high as a normal uh, aircraft or how, how much higher does it go? So uh, unclassified, it goes above 70,000 feet. So that's of course unclassified, about, yeah. Yeah, unclassified. <laughs> unclassified. <laughs> <laughs> 70,000 so, uh, feet. Okay. Above 70,000. Wow. 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 And then like when I'm flying commercial, they're like, oh, you're approaching 37,000 feet. So I'm yes. at, wow, that's like twice as high. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so Phil, what does Tough as Nails have in store for us uh, at season two debuts? Well, you know, one of the great things about doing a season two is that people know what the show is. Uh, when you're making a, a season one, you're reaching out to people and you're saying, you know, are you interested in being in this new show? And people don't know what the tone of the show is. They don't know what the approach of the show is. Um, they don't know anything. And there, there are a lot of shows that don't necessarily treat people respectfully. And mm -hmm. so people can be apprehensive. Now, a lot of the people that we want on our show, they're not looking to parlay this into becoming famous or the next influencer. They love their jobs. They, 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 go, they went back to their jobs after they finished shooting on season one. So in the beginning, it was very challenging. Like, no, 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 this is a show that we really want you to be on, but you know, it's gonna be a uplifting show, a heartfelt show. And then when the show was going into air and then people see, oh, I see what it's about. Then we were inundated with thousands of applicants because people are like, oh, I see what you're doing here. Um, I see the different approach that you're taking. Um, and then this it's the same with the challenges. In the beginning, we were trying to convince people to work with us like, oh, we want to come to your farm and we want to do a challenge. And they're like, what is this show? I don't even know what the show is. <laughs> and, um, and the second season, now we got people coming to us go, will you come to our business? Will you come to our yeah. farm? you come to our construction site <laughs> and do something. And so, um, you know, there's so much detail to work out in season one where you have to focus on what are the pantones of the graphics look like? How do the graphics come on? What's the music like? What's the style of the show? How do you shoot the show? What's the color grade look like on the show? You mm -hmm. know, the distinctive colors. I wanted it to be very like old world looking like kind of like a ectochrome uh, look from like the late thirties, early forties, that kind of, um, filmic look, you, you're dialing in so many details to get going that you have less energy to focus on the things you really want to do, which are more in the storytelling. So in season two, I think you're going to see a deeper dive into character. I think you're going to see a deeper dive into our 12 characters. I think that you'll learn more. Um, we only have 12 contestants. A lot of shows, contest, I mean, competition shows, don't have upwards of 60, 70 people in a season. You can't possibly get to know 60, 70 people in a competition show like that. Whereas our show is very much about character. You're going to meet Meryl. People will meet her. That will get to know her, get to know what is, what's going through her mind um, and, and understand her at a deeper level than you would on a show where it's just all about the competition. It's all about a pie in the face or an action moment. This is much more about sitting with these with, with our contestants, listening to what they have to say. Words of wisdom. Meryl is known for her words of wisdom. Um, <laughs> and, and she imparts a lot of that wisdom that we know that when young boys and girls see Meryl, they are going to be inspired. They're going to feel something that might motivate them to serve because they're like, I want to be like her. 
I want to be like freight train and I want to have a job where my job matters or Sally, who's a, who's a nurse, who's, who's worked in COVID in 2020 and literally held people's hands when, when they've died, like things that matter in the world, things that make the world function. So I think you're just going to see a deeper dive into character. And I, I will, uh, um, I would be very surprised if people don't fall in love with at least one of our characters after they meet them at the start. Oh. Yeah, no, that's super refreshing to, to highlight, uh, you know, uh, the microcosm of, of the country. Like this is what, this, this is what people are, are actually doing. You know, it, you got yeah. a small percentage of folks that are, you know, actors or athletes, but these are the hardworking Americans. And, and that's awesome that you guys are highlighting them that way. Yep. Yep. Deep dive. Wonderful. So you guys have mentioned Murph already. So Meryl, considering that your fellow veteran, uh, Kelly Murphy, was last season's champion, how do you feel about your odds of winning this year? And then how will your Air Force career set you apart from the rest of the contestants? Oh, two-part question. Okay. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the odds, are, the odds are the same for everyone, one in 12. Um, I bring a lot to the table. Good um, answer. I think I said I will I will <laughs> keep going until my body fails. And that's fact. So um <laughs> my odds are as good as anyone else's, same as Murph's when he he did it. So we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, so tune in <laughs> to find out. <laughs> tune in and find out. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um for my what does this do for my Air Force career? How, was, like how was how is you serving the Air Force and how is your career how will that um you know set you apart from the other con contestants? Um, the way it sets me apart is is that I've always I, I've done a, a few leadership roles. I've commanded uh, squadrons. I've been director of operation for squadrons, hundreds of people. So um, my leadership style is in order, part of my leadership style, some things I do are, I try to get to know people as best as I can to bring the best out of them. So um, if I'm walking through the halls, I'll talk to enlisted folks or other officers, young officers, and just figure out how their day is going and start to learn about them, their families. And I try to know what makes them tick. And again, that is, and it doesn't have to be this incredible deep dive sometimes it's just knowing their names knowing their kids names or knowing that they're just taking an interest and even if you forget you you're just human being and you're just on that human level with them and find some connection and i found out as being as i as i moved through the ranks that using that type of style i could get things or get people to do things that they might not necessarily have been able to do before and uh I think in Tough as Nails, you'll see some of that um, or just the way I talk to people. So that's how my Air Force experiences has, has helped me. And the fact that, is there gonna be an aircraft challenge on Tough as Nails? Well, I don't think a lot of people are gonna get in an aircraft to see who can fly the best, but I have a lot of technical and mechanical skills that I think will serve me well on some of the challenges. Man. Man. See, Phil, Phil just said that you you were the OG of dropping knowledge, so you definitely you you just sh you just showed it right there, man. You you dropping jewels, so we appreciate that. Um, so this question is kind of both of you: How did the COVID nineteen uh, uh, affect the production of the show? I'm sure it was all kind of craziness, and I, I can't wait for this COVID thing to be, you know, let let's transition back to the real world, please, please. But uh, how did it affect the, the production of the show? Um, well. I'm, I'm hoping, Meryl, that you felt uh, super safe while you were on the show. Oh, um, absolutely. I mean, that, I mean, we, we started out with a quarantine period and um, it was a, a two week period. And I think I was the only one who thought that was such a vacation. Uh, the fact that I was in a room by myself with no kids, no husband. <laughs> it was the best time ever. Yeah. I loved every moment of it. I got to read. It was quiet. You no, know, mama, can I have? Can I do this? Can I do that? I actually loved that time. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Well, um, you know, our number one priority is 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 making sure people are safe. And um, 
there's there's always a certain amount of risk with uh, with doing a reality competition show. You know, we worry about this on Amazing Race as well, getting people out into the world and getting them back home safely to their families. Um, but there's there's inherent risk, not just in 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 competing on a show like this, um, but in real life, right? I mean, you can be run over by a bus crossing the road. So um, our goal is to look after everybody, but now adding the layer of protecting everybody from a deadly virus, that's, that's another layer that uh, required a tremendous amount of attention. Now, if you look at a show like Big Brother, they, are, uh, they had to come up with a COVID plan for the Big Brother house. And that COVID plan involved working out where are people gonna park, where are they going to eat lunch? Where are they going to go to the bathroom? Where are they going to get their drinks from? Where are they going to cross each other? How close are they going to be to, with each other? Where are they going to meet? There was a huge, huge document that had to be prepared for how you shoot at that one location. We had more than two dozen locations. Mm. Every single location had to have a plan for where are we going to park? Where are the toilets set up? Where's the water set up? Where are we going to have lunch? All of these things. And each one had to be filed and then every element of it approved. The amount of work that went into each one of those plans, we ended up with a document, and I'm not exaggerating, was like this thick. Oh, and a lot of the locations got rejected because we couldn't provide enough separation with where red zone was parked and where green zone was parked. So the pressure that our executive in charge of production, Terry Castanola, was under with his team was enormous. It was like another show on top of the show that we were producing. <laughs> Making a television show is hard enough because you're trying to fit everything in the, in the day. You're trying to get interviews in before the sun goes down. If the sun goes down there, you have lighting. If you have lighting, that's an extra expense. You got to rent lights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that layer and that pressure on our team was immense. And thankfully, I had people that could take some of that pressure away from me so I could focus on, and, and, and our producing team could focus on telling stories of, of our cast and looking after them and all of that. But at night, Terry, our EIC, he had to go home with all of that. He had to think about what was going to happen if there was rain and the road that leads into the parking lot that goes to how everybody's separated and did people are people uh adhering to our rules of wearing their masks because one person pulls down a mask and one person from green zone connects with somebody from red zone where Meryl and i were in the red zone meaning we were had been in quarantine one person transmits that virus across it just goes Boom, 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 like a domino effect all the way through the production and then boom, just like that, the, sh the show shut down. And every day we're living with that and we would get these briefings and the COVID officer would say, just want to let you know, um, a streaming net network, I won't mention the name, they're down the road, they just got shut down, one of their actors connected with a so-and-so and they've contracted COVID and they shut the whole thing down. Now, this, we're talking about livelihoods of drivers, yep. camera operators, sound people. One person's negligence could take away the livelihoods of hundreds of people. So that pressure was immense. It was tremendous. And um, thankfully, everybody on our production, you know, every now and again, we had to get throw out some reminders. But for the most part, people understood what was at stake. And we got through our production with not one incident of COVID. And I will tell you, that is unusual because if you look at the records of a lot of productions that were shooting around that time, they didn't get off lightly like we did, but we followed the rules. We stuck to the rules. Our cast was really good at, at following protocol. Everybody in production pulled their weight and, and we got through it. So I'm very, very proud of it. And the fact that we get to share a show with you tonight <laughs> on CBS, after everything we've been through, uh, yeah, I mean, I just can't say enough about the team that has made this all happen and we got everybody home safe. Thank you for going that extra mile to, to stay safe, to keep people working safely, and then also to bring a, you know, some 
some comfort, um, some something to look forward to. TV's great. It's a great connector and it um, it's something the whole country can can get behind and yep. and enjoy. So thank you for your efforts to to bring this into our homes tonight. We're all looking forward to it. Wanted to pause for just a minute and share a couple of comments that we're getting on the live feed. So we have Jason Simmons. Jason says, thank you for your continued support to military members around the world joining in from near Ramstein Air Base in Germany. Ooh. And then we have um, Stephanie I hope I say her last name right. It's Camrar. She says, go Merrill, watching from Rheinstein Air Base, Germany. All right. Love that. <laughs> love that. Getting a lot of likes and loves out there. <laughs> uh, that's great. Now we, you know, we're, we're, uh, we are, we are privileged. Um, we are, we, we, this, if anything has come out of 2020, it's, it's, it's a time for us to uh, reassess the things that, are good in life and a chance for us to reassess what is right instead of what's wrong. And um, one of my favorite things about the show, and, and Meryl is a big part of this, um, is what we call drive time. And that's where we just put cameras in the vans and we let our cast talk about whatever they want to talk about. Um, and you know, sometimes we'll prompt them and say, hey, why don't you guys talk about what happened today or this or that or the other. But for the most part, the, the best conversations are the ones that are their conversations, things that they wanna talk about. And on our show, we wanna drill in on unity, uh, resolution, um, resolving differences. Um, we deliberately leave stuff out of the show that plays up negativity or conflict or it's not that we won't show conflict i mean that that's not you know we're going to definitely show things as they happen but we want to get to a place where there's some closure where there's some some uh, sense of understanding about points of difference that people have and maybe opening people's eyes up to a different way of thinking about whether that's about sexism or racism or ageism or things that affect us and where we're able to look at that topic uh, through a different set of lenses because somebody who is affected by sexism say can now offer some insight to, to, to somebody else about what it's like for them and, and that they're listened to and, and that there's a time taken to really comprehend what that person is saying and why they feel the way they feel. And so, you know, I'm an immigrant I came from New Zealand. I came to America because to me, America represented people of all shades of color from different backgrounds and where to me, it represented what unity is about and what it's like to be united. And, and if, if there's anything positive that I think could come out of, out, out of tough as nails, it's that we can show that people who look so different from each other, who are different from each other, from all different walks of life can come together and actually have a constructive conversation about some pretty hot topics, no matter who they voted for, no matter what color they are, or what they do for a living, and, and show that in a little microcosm there, representing what is the United States, that we can actually agree to disagree, that we can listen to each other, and we can gain new perspective. Yeah, that's that's awesome that you guys are able to kind of display display the, the process and, 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 you know, like you said, put a put a bow on it to say, you know what, we, we can coexist together and we, yeah. we don't have to agree and we can do all that good stuff. But yeah. you, you mentioned not something about, easy. no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's just, it's not always easy, but, but yeah. let's, let's have the dialogue. Let's, you know, people who are sexist or racist or have ageism, try to understand where did that come from? Why are you, why do you not think it's a, a, a woman's place to work in the trades? What, what is it about their, their upbringing or, the influences that they've had in their life that make them think that way, rather than just saying it's wrong, why do they think that way? There's maybe good aspects to that person. Um, you know, there's other qualities that are good qualities, but maybe they need a helping hand to kind of see it from a different point of view and open their eyes up and go, oh, I see what you mean now. And so for, for us having men and women competing on the show and for young boys and girls to see that 
toughness isn't just about strength and endurance, that it is about those things that Meryl talked about, those life skills and, and mental toughness. You want to talk about mental toughness, look at Meryl. I mean, what she has done and the mental toughness that it's taken to do what she does every day and what Selly does going into a hospital, that mental toughness, that's a part of what we're measuring on tough as nails. It's not just about a guy who jumps in a cage and beats somebody up. That is tough. Yes, it's absolutely tough. But my mother, who's 78, the mentally toughest person I have ever met in my life, period. And I've met a lot of people. But my mother will work and get something done and do something for somebody until she literally passes out. Much tougher than my dad, who's a big, burly rugby player. That mental toughness means something. It accounts for something. And we're trying to shine a light on that. It's not just about playing in the NFL or being, you know, in the MMA. Yes. So, no, we, we appreciate that, definitely. And I know you guys had, had a little fun, too. Uh, and so you, you mentioned the car, the, the car talk. So in my mind, I popped in a car karaoke. So, <laughs> so, so Mara, what's, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, man, this is probably the toughest question yet. Go to... Come on, Mara, what about that dance thing that you did with Sully and... and yeah, you know? we, I know. we haven't okay. even got to the TikTok yet. But we'll... I know, well, I mean, we we like Megan Thee Stallion a little bit. We would <laughs> do a little remix to that. We'd make up our own songs a little bit in the car. Um, that that was that was Sally's fault. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my teammates and I we we did quite a bit of dancing. I'm kind of <laughs> embarrassed now. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, listen, no, don't be embarrassed. It's it's out there on the internet. I saw some Aunt Viv. I saw you doing a little Aunt Viv. Yeah, I got you. I'm, we, I'm with you. <laughs> But that's, that's awesome that y'all can, you know, have, go through all, every range of emotion to, you know, kind of serious uh, talks and then have fun with each other. Like, it's it's good to see that all in one show. I, I would say for my teammates and I, even if we had a tough day or a tough competition, I think it would last maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then we're back to joking again. I mean, we just water off a duck's back, you know, so we know what we needed to do and we would still have fun. I think that's why we were had such a tight relationship. Um, it was, it was good. Okay. So, so no go-to karaoke song. Got it. I, no. Uh, come on now. You got it. We couldn't play music in the car. So we would always. Yeah. You can blame that on me, Meryl. I, I you know, cause it, it, messes, <laughs> it, it messes up the sound chief because if you've got a song, you know, and, and, and it's playing in the background and then you're cutting the, the, you know, discussion for at different times and compressing it, then the song would be jumping all over the place, right? So we have oh, to yeah. have like no sound. So it sounds like it sounds like everything was tough on the show. The production was tough. Oh, the, 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 the activities were tough. Every, everybody's tough on the show. Well, I, what I, about you, Chief? What's yours? So my go-to song is Purple Rain, like you, because you don't have to really sing it. You can just talk it, and then it just <laughs> and then everybody can go along with you, and then you can turn off the lights, put up your cell phone, and go back and forth say purple rain like it's, it's just easy for me that's all and yet you're allowed I, I, to I give us a little rendition like oh no 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 not, yeah yeah <laughs> yes Bill, yeah. i well, love that idea come on chief i, I uh, i'm gonna say meryl and i will be uh leaving this uh, zoom call if we don't get a little purple rain <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, chief jack karaoke edition. Uh, no, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't want the show to be about me. The show is about Meryl and Phil. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, that was that was, well like, played. Uh, well that was played. like an F-15 turn, man. You just went <laughs> right over here like that. Hey, I learned that in chief school. That's what that's <laughs> I guess well played, Chief. Well played. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'll do that off camera. I I I, I don't want this to live on the internet too long. <laughs> Good deal. Well, as a reminder to our viewers, Tough as Nails is back for season two at eight, seven central on CBS tonight. Phil, where can viewers go to find out more or follow along? Well, uh, cbs.com is a great place to go. Um, if you go to cbs.com slash tough as nails, um, or just go to cbs.com and then punch in tough as nails, you'll see right up there about the cast and there's some um, some videos, uh, some teaser videos, um, you know, right out of the gate tonight, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna meet everybody. 
And the first thing they're gonna do, everybody, uh, I have them do is do a job where um, we have them make some concrete actually. And, um, and part of that challenge is to get two top place finishes, finishers who then pick two teams of six. Um, the big difference with Tough as Nails from other reality shows is that we have this individual competition where people are competing for the overall Tough as Nails title, but only one person will win. As Meryl said, there's, there's, uh, there's 12 people on the show, only one will win. And you'll have to wait to see whether it's Meryl. Mm -hmm. But um, most people will be making their money in the team competition. And that's quite frankly, particularly early on in the season before the stakes of winning the individual become higher and higher towards the end of the season. The, the team competition is where there's really a lot of dynamics and you're going to see uh, stuff that works and stuff that doesn't work. And you're going to see some, you know, t teams get frustrated with each other, but you've got to understand you're throwing people from all these different walks of life. A lot of a types, a lot of people are used to being leaders. You're throwing them together and saying, mm -hmm. get on and do a job maybe that you've never done before. And that to me is the, that's the thing that about the show that I love is just to see how people uh, are at adapting and working with other people and making compromises and maybe not always getting their way. And uh, that, that's what I think the viewers are going to like the most when they, if, if you haven't seen the show before, I think that's what you'll like the most. And, and I'm sure Meryl can attest to this, that you, you just explained the whole military experience, right? Just in that whole, what, what you just said is throwing everybody from all walks of life, from every uh, nook and cranny throughout the country, the world, really, and uh, and asking them to do a task, and so that's that's what we that's what we live every day uh, in the military. Absolutely, that that is a hundred percent. And then you have to know when to step up or step back. So you have to be able to recognize that and don't take it personal. Absolutely. Yeah. So hey, that, chief. Yes. I just wanted to share one quick comment. Uh, Jay Taylor says, "Thank you for this. My Air Force pride meter is pegged." <laughs> go air force that's what i'm talking about <laughs> so um phil and Merrill, i i just really want to say on behalf of uh the nation's airmen soldiers guardians marines sailors coast guard members uh and their and their families past and present uh thank you thank you for what, what you're doing to 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 give us something to 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 look at to to take our mind away from all the craziness that we deal with on on a normal basis and uh you know we 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 definitely thank you for your service, Meryl, because uh, you know what you you're retired now, and then you know to think of a re a military retiree that that's putting you know twenty plus years of whatever on their bodies to say you know what let me let me do some more. So so that's <laughs> you know big ups to you, a big double salute to you as well. So thank you so much for being with us today. We really definitely appreciate you. Uh, we're rooting for you, Meryl, and the show. We're, we're we're big supporters of the show. So you guys check it out tonight uh, on CBS. Thank you. Um, I, I wanna say a couple of things. Um, firstly, everybody who's listening, thank you for your service. I thanked Meryl on the show, but thank you to everybody who is out there all around the world. And thank you, Germany, for checking in with us today. That's very cool. Stay safe over there. Um, what is it? I guess it's pretty cold right now over in Germany, right? Um, so stay warm. And uh, I got an idea. I, I think next season, um, and again, I'm being hopeful here, we get Merrill to come back on the show and set up an Air Force challenge for us. And maybe we got to swap out an engine on a, on a U2 or something, you know. We'll, <laughs> we'll something. Uh, but we'll find a, we'll find a challenge uh, in the Air Force uh, and we'll get, we'll get people from all walks of life to have to come in and we'll do something with the, uh, with the military. Would you be up for that, Merrill? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. I am down for that. I, I think people will love it. And to all my, uh, you know, Navy, Air Force brethren out there, because I'm dual service and all the other military. Hey, thank you for your continued service and all the support. Um, and thank you to all those families out there and to my deployed brethren all over the world. I feel you. I know what it's like. Hang in there. It's going to get better. Awesome. So we, uh, we wish both of you all the best and uh, Chief Chat out. Mm -hmm. Chief Chat out. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody.